When Barack Obama took office as president in January of 2009, the economy obviously was an absolute free fall. It was uh, the Wall Street collapse and the overall financial collapse that occurred at the end of the George W. Bush presidency. Just free fall. I mean, Great Depression time, yawning abyss. And so shortly after being sworn in as president, the new president and the Democrats in Congress pushed through something that used to be a non-controversial way of dealing with big economic downturns. When George W. Bush had had an economic downturn to deal with in 2008, uh, he passed a stimulus. When, when Ronald Reagan had an economic downturn to deal with in 1981, he passed a stimulus. When this new Democratic administration took over in the middle of a huge economic downturn in 2009, they did the same thing. They passed a stimulus. E even though a stimulus had been a non-controversial bipartisan tool of economic policy in the past, in 2009, with the new President Barack Obama in office, Republicans decided they were going to be against anything this new president put forward, even if it was the kind of thing that they had supported in the past under presidents of both parties. And so they decided they were against the stimulus. Every single Republican in the House of Representatives voted no on the stimulus. But they, but they didn't just vote against it. They also made a big public case that the stimulus bill was bad for the country, that it would do harm to the country, that it wasn't just uh, 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 pointless uh, or even worse than pointless to spend money in this way to try to help the economy it wasn't just a bad idea it was an immediate evil that was going to make the country worse off than it already was one of the Republican congressmen who was making that same public case at the time was a Republican congressman named Paul Ryan from Wisconsin we can do better than this this bill this economic stimulus package is unworthy of our new president's signature. This is just a long spending wish list from every spending interest group that's out there. If you're going to go out and borrow $825 so billion, recraft it for me, Congressman this Ryan. is recraft not going it. to work, and that's what our concern is. This is unworthy of our new president's signature. This is a giveaway to special interest. This is not going to work. Not going to work, he says. A year after the stimulus passed, Paul Ryan went on a local radio show in Massachusetts where a guy named Joe from Stoughton asked him, hey, you, you weren't one of those Republican congressmen with a giant check, right? You, you weren't one of those Republican congressmen who was a real hypocrite on the stimulus, were you? Here's how that exchange went on that radio show. I assume you voted against the stimulus, and I'm just curious if you accepted any monies in your district. No, I'm not one of those who votes for something and then writes to the government to ask them to send us money. I did not request any stimulus money. I did not request any stimulus money. I'm not one of those people. Yes, in fact, he is one of those people. He did that exact thing that he denied right there. Um, and his hypocrisy on this issue, criticizing it publicly, but then privately asking for it for himself, it did get some attention at the time, but frankly, Paul Ryan was just a backbench Wisconsin Republican. I mean, granted, he was one who wanted to be known as somebody who was very serious about government spending, but he just wasn't all that famous, and the issue of his hypocrisy on the stimulus eventually blew over for a while. But now Paul Ryan is not just a backbench congressman from Wisconsin, now he's about to be the vice presidential nominee of the Republican Party. So now his record's getting a little renewed attention. The Associated Press and the Boston Globe this week dug up further evidence that despite what Paul Ryan told Joe from Stoughton, the congressman had in fact requested stimulus money while he was saying publicly that it was a horrible, awful thing that would hurt the economy. Which means that he was lying in that local radio interview in 2010. He lied to good old Joe from Stoughton. Now that it is the national media, though, that is nailing him for having been a hypocrite on the stimulus. And not just being a hypocrite, but lying about it. I mean, saying in public that it would be horrible for the economy, and saying in private that it would be great for the economy. Saying publicly that it was a disaster, and privately that he would please like some of it because it looked great. Now that he's getting nailed for that publicly, he's not just lying to Joe from Stoughton, now he is lying to the entire country that is trying to vet him as to whether or not he's qualified to be vice president. A report came out again today in the AP. It was a, a repeat of that Wall Street Journal article from a couple of years ago where uh, you had asked for stimulus money for your district. Is that accurate? No, I, Is that I, report I accurate? I asked for stimulus. I don't, I, I don't recall. I haven't seen this report, so I really can't comment on it. Um, I oppose the stimulus because it doesn't work. It didn't work. No, I never asked for stimulus, he says. Yes, you did. 
The Wall Street Journal reported on you doing it. The AP reported on you doing it. The Boston Globe reported on you doing it. Do you want to see the letters? Uh, here's Paul Ryan in October 2009 writing to the Secretary of Labor, Mr. Ryan not only asking for stimulus money, but noting that it would help place 1,000 workers in green jobs. Here's Paul Ryan that same month writing the Secretary of Energy asking for stimulus money that would help, quote, develop a workforce in Wisconsin to make commercial buildings more energy efficient. Here's Paul Ryan, December 2009, writing to the Energy Department for funds to, quote, stimulate the local and area economy by creating new jobs. I thought stimulus can't do that. Uh, he said the stimulus funding would create or retain approximately 7,600 new jobs. This company he's writing on their behalf here uh, actually got $20 million, thanks in part to Paul Ryan's fulsome praise of how much stimulus money for that company would create jobs in his district. $20 million of that wasteful, pointless money that would do nothing to create jobs, but you nevertheless begged for it because of your private argument about how much good it would do. Your private argument that apparently you thought you would never have to answer for on the national stage. A report came out again today in the AP. It was a, a repeat of that Wall Street Journal article from a couple of years ago where uh, you had asked for stimulus money for your district. Is that accurate? No, I, Is that I, report I, I accurate? I never asked for stimulus. I don't, I, I don't recall that. I never asked for stimulus. So that, that, was, that was today. It's one thing to not answer for it to, to Joe from Stoughton right, on a local radio show that you're pretty sure nobody in your home district, let alone national political circles, was expected to have archived, no matter how great the Dan Ray show is on WBZ. It's another thing, though, to lie blatantly in the face of black and white evidence that proves you are lying, that proves you are lying about your own record. If you believe the game change account of the 2008 presidential campaign, this kind of thing happening with John McCain's vice presidential nominee, with Sarah Palin, was the cause of crisis in that campaign. Do you remember how that played out in the Game Change movie? Remember this scene? Why haven't you released a statement saying that Todd was never a member of the Alaskan Independence Party? Because that would be untrue. He was a member. He checked the wrong box. He registered by accident and rectified the error immediately. He was a member for seven years. I'm sorry, Governor, but... There is only a few weeks left in this campaign. You have got to stop saying things to the press that are blatantly untrue. That is not the kind of campaign that we are running here. You have to stop saying things to the press that are blatantly untrue. There's only a few weeks left in the campaign. Late tonight, after being confronted with the reams of evidence that he did, in fact, request stimulus money, Paul Ryan released a new statement acknowledging the truth. It says, quote, after having these letters called to my attention, I checked into them, and they were treated as constituent service requests in the same way matters involving Social Security or Veterans Affairs are handled. This is why I didn't recall the letters earlier, but they should have been handled differently, and I take responsibility for that. Regardless, it's clear that the Obama stimulus did nothing to stimulate the economy, and now the president is asking to do it all over again. It did nothing to stimulate the economy, even though I wrote letters saying, please give me this money, it will help stimulate the economy. And then I signed my name at the bottom of those letters. And if I did request all that stimulus money, which I did, by the way, I did it by mistake, my staff did it. I signed it, yeah, but it was my staff. Paul Ryan is not Sarah Palin. At least, he's not Sarah Palin yet. We'll see how it goes at the convention. Um, but this is a problem for the Romney-Ryan campaign, and it gets at a bigger problem for Mr. Ryan's running mate that the Romney campaign still has not solved, which also came to a sort of very difficult head today. And that is that Mr. Romney's answer for why he won't release his tax returns is that we're supposed to trust him when he tells us what is in them. Today, Mr. Romney said that he looked back at his last decade of tax returns and he wants to assure us that we should trust him. He looked at it and it turns out he never paid zero taxes. He never paid less than 13% in taxes. We should trust him. He's not going to show the evidence of that. He just wants us to believe it when he says it. Mr. Romney says he never paid zero. Paul Ryan says he never requested stimulus money. Yes, this is about the effectiveness of government efforts to stimulate the economy. And yes, this is about the low, low tax burden of the truly rich and famous in this country. But at a more basic level, it is also about how comfortable you are with just looking people in the eye and saying something even about yourself that is not true, something checkable about yourself that you know you may get caught on and just saying it anyway.